Joining me on this broadcast, national spokesperson of the BJP, Sanju Verma, advocate Nilofar Masood, leader of the National Conference, spokesperson of the PDP, Mohit Bhan, joins us, and former bureaucrat, uh, Farooq Renzu Shah, also with me. Let me begin by asking uh, Sanju Verma. We have the Union Home Minister saying that uh, we are looking, we are considering, we are mulling removal of AFSPA. Is that the bullet that we are going to be seeing the centre bite anytime soon? You know, uh, first and foremost, Poonam, uh, thank you for putting out that comprehensive uh, primer with respect to data on how we stand and where we stand with respect to Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, the limited answer to your very pertinent query is, uh, yes, going forward, uh, you know, uh, there is every intent uh, on the part of the Modi government to ensure that uh, AFSPA is a thing of the past. But whether it will happen by way of a blanket removal of AFSPA or whether it will happen in phases, that remains to be seen uh, because if I have to go as per uh, what happened in the Northeast, don't forget that you know uh, Manipur was declared a disturbed area for the longest time in 1980 for the first time, Tripura for the first time in 1997, Assam for the first time in 1990, Nagaland for the first time in 1995. And I am told, uh, Poonam, as you and me speak, that uh, you know uh, in large parts of Northeast, uh, the AFSPA has actually been removed. Uh, you know, for instance, in Assam, out of 33 districts, AFSPA is now uh, applicable in less than 20 districts. Similarly, out of 15 districts in Nagaland, it is applicable only in 8 districts. Hmm. Similarly, in 26 districts of Arunachal Pradesh, it was earlier applicable in a blanket manner, but that uh, is now limited to only 8 or 9 districts. So I think what the Modi government has done in the Northeast has proven to be successful. Uh, do away with ASPA, but rather than blanketly removing it, do it in phases uh, so that the security aspect, uh, you know, uh, is not compromised. And at the same time, uh, the uh, sewer motor powers that the armed forces and the paramilitary forces have by way of the ASPA Act dating back to 1958, hmm. uh, you know, uh, those powers are also curtailed. Uh, so I think there will be uh, some kind of a uh, give and take uh, to ensure that all these stakeholders in Jammu and Kashmir, uh, you know, uh, they are happy at the end of the day because that is exactly what we intended to do hmm. uh, with abrogation of Article 370 and that is precisely what we've done. In fact, don't forget that last December, in December 2023, the JNK uh, reorganization bill was passed with a thumping majority in the Lok Sabha. And for everybody who says, Are election kam honge Jammu Kashmir way. So please, uh, you know, understand that the Supreme Court categorically told the Modi government that by the 30th of September 2024, mm. elections in Jammu and Kashmir need to be held. Yes. And we are going to comply with the Supreme Court diktat on that count. Sure, there's still time for September. So why raise the bogey of no elections? Nilufar Masood, why does the NC, why does Umar Abdullah say this is linked to the 2024 general elections? There's a sense of whipping up sentiment and that's all that the BJP is trying to do. Nothing is going to come out of this is what Umar Abdullah said. Why is that? Why do you not take the BJP's intent as Sanju Varma put on, its, uh, on the face value? Well, uh, Punum, I'll say here that uh, I hope that this is not the political gimmick as they had already done in the Ladakh also. They had promised that they will be given the sixth schedule. But unfortunately, after elections, that was refused. And till date, they are uh, the people of the Ladakh, they are on the streets fighting for the sixth schedule. Now, when we talk about the removal of the Afsafa, uh, if you remember in the year 2011, when Umar Abdullah was CM of Jammu and Kashmir, he had sought in fact, put the proposal that there should be phased wise revocation uh, of this uh, AFSAPA. But unfortunately, that uh, faced very stiff resistance from the army because uh, they never wanted that it should be uh, revoked at that point of time. But even if it is done today, with a true heart, we believe that anything which is in the welfare of the people, we are with the people and we want everything which will be done by the government, for, uh, government of India for the welfare of the people. Uh, Jammu Kashmir National Conference will be very happy for that thing. And another thing which I want to say that uh, we cannot say uh, that uh, whatever has been said by the Amit Shah uh, on, uh, on 5th August 2019 on the, on the floor of the parliament that has never been done. And we uh, doubt the credibilities on this ground because of the reason if things are very fine. Why, don't they, why didn't they hold the elections simultaneously with the uh, parliamentary elections? On one way, they are saying that there is normalcy, we want phase-wise revocation of the uh, this AFSAFA. And on the other side, when the elections are to be uh, taken place in the Jammu and Kashmir, they are overdue. The elections are never been, the election, they are saying that we'll wait for the September. So these two stats cannot... But ma'am, that's a deadline that the 
Supreme Court of this country has said the election that commission been, that yes. could have been done together. That the election, the election commission has also the election commission which conducts these elections has also come out and said that this is something that they are looking into. They do have a timeline in mind. The election commission's team was in Jammu and Kashmir trying to assess what the security situation was like ahead of the Lok Sabha elections as well. Let me remind you, Pono, when mm. these two elections, when uh, the last statement was made, it was said that these two elections cannot be held simultaneously because of the security reasons. And now when the government of India is coming with a stand that everything is fine here, we are going for the revocation of the Afsafa, then where does that stand go? That's my point Can I quickly here. answer that? Yes, Sanju Varma, 30 seconds for your rebuttal before I get in the other two gentlemen. Thank you. You know, let's be very clear, if you look at the chronology of events post the abrogation uh, in uh, 2019, you know, the delimitation commission headed by uh, former uh, judge Ranjana Desai, uh, they had, you know, more than uh, three dozen sittings. And finally, the report was made public only in May 2022, whereby the number of seats in Kashmir division was raised uh, by one and uh, the number of seats in uh, Jammu division uh, were raised by six. Uh, taking the total tally to 90 and then the president uh, you know was given powers uh, that you know he or she can recommend uh, two uh, more seats uh, one for a person uh, who's been displaced displaced pardon me uh, from POK and another should be preferably a Kashmiri migrant a woman and then nine more seats were added by way of scheduled tribes who will now have the right to even stand for elections not just vote so the limited point I'm making is that between the delimitation commission's recommendations in May 2022 and December 2023, a whole lot has happened by way of adding number of seats to the Jammu division, sure. the Kashmir, Kashmir division, ensuring that scheduled tribes get their right to franchise, ensuring that a sure. person from POK... So the point you're trying to make is that electoral democracy is not in a limbo as the opposition tries to make it uh, look or make it sound. There have been steps that have been taken and gradually we'll see elections happen there as well. Farooq Renzo Shah, do you agree? With the claims that the government has been making, there is there is data to prove on record the government says that yes, terror has gone down, stone pelting has reduced, there are absolutely no more hartals anymore. We've seen the kind of tourism boost uh, that Jammu and Kashmir has seen. It has been the highest ever in independent India the uh, last year. Yeah, this is very obvious. You can see if you come today also, there are around uh, 60, 70 flights per day. You don't get tickets, even tickets have gone, even uh, 20,000 beyond, such as the rush to arrival and departure from Kashmir. So that is the indication that there is a positive change. Number second, as far as AFSA is concerned, who were the beneficiaries of AFSA? I think AFSA was being used to make a demon out of the army of India by the local parties. They were cashing it like 96, uh, yeah, in 96, out of 3 lakh constituency per constituency, only 100 votes were casted and one became the enemy because they were getting benefit of depriving the people to vote. Uh, it has happened. They were trying in 1970, 1987 way because again it's the local parties who really uh, many words would exude the subpoena in this also and criminalize it and surcharge and never talk that before holding any election let all Kashmiri parties be brought back. Hmm. So uh, there should be I think uh, not only Sapa is, is a very good decision and the benefit will be directly taken by the, uh, the central government parties this time uh, because of the development approach also and there is a, some way uh, when in the 90s, when the, uh, Mr. Modi came to Lal Chow, there were not even three Kashmiris to receive him because of the prayer. And uh, today, you have seen more than 50,000 people attended his uh, rally. So, it means there is a way where people are not against India. They were never from 1947 against them. Uh, even they want that uh, get in Pakistan and uh, POK should be brought back. Because uh, we are the total uh, territory of Kulak, 22,000 uh, square kilometers. But these political parties have a vested interest. Like uh, you remember once Mahabubu Mufi said that uh, why should not army shower the bullets? Are they going to these children to get uh, uh, milk and coffees from them? 
So because they they are pretty, yeah. 